Here we go. Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Said podcast, backyard, quarantine, homeschool edition. You know, that's how we doing it. And uh, we have uh, we have the homie Jeff Joe, man. I just wanted to check in on you, Jeff. Uh, happy 420, first of all, bro. Hey, man, happy holiday to you, Big Chingo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this this not weed smoke. This this candle smoke that's showing in the camera right now. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's just straight CBD. <laughs> you know, straight from your gas station. That's right, man. Man, how you living, man? Sorry, the the connection got a little shaky right there, but uh, man, as you can see, man, I'm I'm juggling. You know, being a parent and uh. Uh, having you know being laid off a laid off stand-up comedian tour is on hold so all things considered uh, I'm, I actually feel more rested than I have in a long time and it's really giving me it's really giving me time to just like sort out me like just kind of like have to like not procrastinate just deal with my own shit and like you know like you know the bickering I don't know if you got any bickering going on over there but uh let's just say I have to work on my patience man <laughs> Like for real, you know, it's it's making everybody slow down and really just think about every step we taking now, man. I, it's a gift and a curse. I think we had talked about we we text about that before. Like it's a gift and a curse right now, cause I mean you want to get around and be active and everything, but at the same time, I really need to get the downtime, man. Really need the time to reflect, like get get your chips in order so you can attack it differently. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. getting that uh. We getting a, um, I ain't never got a, a 30 day prison sentence where they gave you $200 on your books. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, the, the commissary, uh, look, commissary. Well, my, my look, I, I don't know what's going on, man. Uh, I really don't know what all we applied for because, uh, one of my comedian friends was like, Hey, man, did, did they approve you for the PPP? I'm like, Man, I, I don't think I signed up for no PPP, but, uh, Shit, it was some other like small business thing where you didn't have to pay it back. It was like a free ten racks. Uh, I I don't even know what happened with that, but uh, but shit, you know. But uh, I heard a lot of people apply for shit like that, and uh, 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 uh like on time and everything. Then like what well, it was a couple days, they said the three hundred forty nine billion small businesses gone. Yeah, they. Uh, I think I, it was just a scheme and a play they were running, man. I don't know who who they gave it to or who all got some, how much they gave out, but uh, I heard it was first come first serve. So shit, maybe they did. Maybe they're like, fuck it, just just divvy it out. Thank you. Maybe they're just like, just divvy it out and uh, get rid of it. But hey, man, l- let me ask you, man. Um, I, I remember you were hitting the uh, like the comedy scene here locally way way more than me. So. How's everybody? Um, how's everybody feeling with like the COVID and, and not being able to hit the stage? Man, to be honest with you, I've been in touch with a few people because I've been heavily disconnected. Man, I've been I know Netflix more than I know about my life right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've been <laughs> I know every program. I play lines and everything for all the shows and shit, but um. Everybody out here, low key depressed, man, because they can't hit the stage, bro. That was like therapy for a lot of people and shit. And I've, I've been seeing a lot of people taking a good approach, you know, doing all the Zoom comedy shows and shit. Like I, I, uh, I seen a couple cats doing Zoom comedy shows. They had the uh, audience members just turn their mics on so that they can hear the laughter. And I mean. You sitting on your couch telling your jokes, which is kind of workshoppy and weird, but at least you know whenever you hit the stage with that shit, it might be fire. If we hit the stage, I mean, we're going to hit the stage again, but I just think yeah. it might be a little different. And, and you know what, man? With with this uh, this website, um, chingo.live, it's a Zoom meeting room that uh, my boy Frank set up for me. It's a Zoom meeting room to where we could like I'll, I'll hit you up about that to where we could do that zoom live audience thing i already did a uh like a live hangout oh, you got the lag oh can you hear me now i can hear you now all right yeah man my bad bro um no no you good yeah what i was saying is um 
with uh oh man my daughter's making a huge watercolor mess over there with with <laughs> with the website with the website we set up chingo.live um we would be able to have the zoom audience where they could turn on uh their mics and shit but um uh, but sometimes man sometimes when it's too many mics on like it might I don't know. It starts sounding weird. Like it starts somebody's dog over there. This person breathing heavy, and and it just starts to create yeah, like a weird. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that because I be having to do them little conference calls. Uh, I didn't have to do Zoom conference calls for my nine to five before. And if you just got your arm, people said the wrong way it'll throw up some call for everybody then you gotta be the admin and mute everybody and shit so i mean that's one approach that i've seen people taking i know personally uh because you know i do the shit at action rad mm -hmm. um we actually about to roll out uh we actually about to start doing the comedy shows on monday uh online but i'm, I'm gonna do it with a different little twist I, I i'm still trying to iron out the wrinkles and everything but I'm a kind. Of, I, I want to host it on Instagram live. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's like it, a, I don't want to have a live audience where you you tune into them. I'm gonna just take the L. But I was just gonna do the Instagram live and uh, call cats up. You know what I'm saying? Because you know they got the little call feature on there. I'm just call you on the live, do a little interview with you. Hey, do like maybe one or two minutes worth of jokes. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to stretch you out too long on the internet. Mm -hmm. and then, and then, we uh we we uh keep it moving, you know what I'm saying? Cause uh that's just gonna be something to do. We probably gonna kick that off. Um, I don't have a date just yet. We might kick it off soon this next Monday though, cause I got all the equipment and everything low key. I think it's just like one little thing that I need to uh, get that rolling. But that's just the little things we can do right now, bro. Well, I I think it's genius, and um, there's no telling where life is gonna is gonna end up like what direction i mean you know how people talk about like you know the new normal and and just really where where is live entertainment heading because it's like is it all gonna be virtual or or every once in a while it's gonna be a a, a damn virus or how often are these viruses gonna pop up <laughs> yeah like look i remember one of the, the the worst things i was seeing in the midst of all this this the, the coronavirus shit I saw people start throwing out the memes, talking about this is supposed to be one of the worst hurricane seasons. So I was like, man, I forgot about hurricanes. Like, I, I forgot we got to deal with that shit too. So, I mean, it's it's there's no telling what's next. And I really hate to even think like that. I mean, you just got to be realistic though. Mm -hmm. uh, I think once they cut it, I, I think once they let everybody out and shit, that's funny. Stop talking like it's general terms. Once they let everybody out, uh, people go be out, social, active, doing the same thing. I just hope a second wave of the virus shit don't happen. But if it do, that might change comedy for us because we like the small, intimate venues where the people could be close to each other and people go be scared to laugh on each other and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think we're going to be fine. But that's just little shit to be in the back of my mind. I'm like, damn, mm. like maybe I have to go do an arena gig or some shit just to, you know. Hey, hey um, have them wear masks where it's like see through right here. That way you can still see them laugh. You can hear them laugh, but ain't nobody doing <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So put, put a mic in there. Look, put your mask and put a little mic in there or something. I don't know. I'm going to try to figure something out, though. I, I done ordered me some masks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I got a couple, and uh, my my wife's uh, cousin and aunt are sewing them and uh, selling them and making cool designs, and uh, they donate a whole bunch of them to like children's hospitals and all that kind of stuff. But uh, but you know that is one of the beautiful things to see is like you know family values and just eat having meals together at home and uh, man, we've been doing so much cleaning and organizing and getting rid of shit. Um, and it was, it was impossible to get to some of these projects, you know, even creative projects that I'm, I'm trying to finally get, get behind, you know, it was hard because you, you know, with the traveling and the touring, yeah. but, but now it's like, I'm having a juggle like, okay, well, it's your turn to watch the baby. So I, I got to go do this. And then, 
all right, we're going to do this together. And then we all break for lunch and then make sure the 11 year old finish her homework. And then we go for a walk. And it's like, yeah, there's no time to record no album or, you know, so procrastination, procrastination is definitely different <laughs> during uh, Corona. Man, you go to somebody's house now and find out the little thing under the stove clean, everything clean. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of yeah. spots in the house you wouldn't even think of. Yeah, you could just drop a tortilla. Fuck it. Fuck it. Pick that motherfucker yeah, up. I ain't even leave the house yesterday. I can't remember the last time I done something like that, man. I don't hey. know, man. Hope they let us out soon, man. Hope they let us out soon. No parole, no probation. Just let me out on my terms. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, it's like a halfway house right now. That's, that's really what it's like right now. <laughs> Yeah, bro. I, I, I'm i just ready to get back to it. I, I really hope it don't change entertainment on no virtual shit. I'm, I'm, everybody not ready for this shit, man. I don't know if you saw Teddy Riley and uh, Babyface try to do their battle, man. Teddy Riley people couldn't even figure out how to get the music right. You know, we can't, we can't be in this situation, man. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't see that. I got to look that up. Uh, uh, it ain't even worth watching, man. They they ain't get some battle like talking about, man. I, I don't know if you've been seeing that though. A lot of people, some stuff has been entertaining on the internet. Like uh, they had uh, the rapper Tory Lanez. He did this little quarantine radio thing on Instagram Live. His shit will be popping. All the DJs and the uh, uh, producers yeah. been doing their little battles online where they put twenty tracks against each other and shit. Yeah. All that shit been cool, but anything cool right now when you stuck in the crib. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, man. Um, unfortunately, they they haven't come up with no kind of vaccine, no kind of medicine that's uh all the way all the way approved or whatever and tested and and uh, and it actually works. Like, there's no silver bullet for it. So one thing for sure is this year is just went to shit. This year is just a wrap. Just call it a loss. It's just a big old L. That you got a hand to like most people. Some people might come out ahead. Um, uh, what what kind of projects are are you working on? Like in terms of um, you know, like a lot of people working now or or different people trying to learn an instrument. Like, what's the thing you trying to you trying to be a barista, a gardener? What what are you into, bro? Man, I've been watching a lot of QVC. Man, I'm learning how to make my own lamp. Nah, uh, <laughs> nah, uh, man, I've been over here playing too. Okay, bro. I, I fucked up. I went and bought a PS4. I've been working on my creative player on 2K, man. But these little 13 year olds, man, they just got too much time on their hands, man. I'm talking about you be sitting there getting blown out in the game by 10, 15 points, and you just hear this little preteen talking about, yeah, you can't handle me. Yeah. Mr. Jeff. Like? Take that, Mr. Jeff Joe. <laughs> it's crazy, man. That's all I've been. I've been on the 2K, and uh, I've been. Uh, I've been on TikTok like lame. I've been on, trying to make TikTok videos. <laughs> Man, I, I signed up. I have not made one. Um, I, I had this single that we had released a few months ago. We shot a video and everything. And um, yeah. I told my 11 year old, I was like, "Hey, cause she's she's all over that TikTok." I was like, "Hey, can you do some TikTok dances to the song so we can get it, you know, get it cracking?" And and she like did it. She's just like, "All right, Dad, I think I got it. It's it's like this, and then this, and then this." And this and and I'm like, yeah, I'm a 40 year old dude. That's way too much hip sway, <laughs> like hip movement, like, like nah. I think I think I think I need to find something else to do on TikTok. <laughs> Man, but people be on there doing well. At first, I was just putting my stand up on there because that was just another online platform for you to just exhaust putting out content or whatever. So I just put stand up on there, and I started getting some little followers or whatever, and uh. Then I started running low on clips. <laughs> I ain't got no clips to put out. So I started trying to create my own. People be on there doing all kind of crazy stuff. You, you, all kind of little little sketches and shit. You know, you know what? Um I found this animator uh who I gave him like a one minute bit and he's doing like a little cartoon. So you're gonna hear me and the audience laughing and right. stuff in the background. Uh I could plug you in with him. He he's um He's hungry. He's reasonable, but uh, that might be another option too. You might have a joke that's like, "Well, I put it on, yeah. I put it on Instagram." Laugh track type shit. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just a little cartoon animation. You know. I would love that. I got a couple jokes ready for that because I was going to do them my own little way. But, but I want to... I'd be... I be thinking some some of my my friends be telling me I be thinking too big because I I be uh instead of just utilizing the resources I have because I mean you can make something out of nothing mm-hmm. but I always be like man I want a production crew I want to have this recorded the right way have it good crystal clear and then next thing you know you see I had a uh, like somebody did one of my jokes somebody did a laugh track of my joke. He was just sitting on the couch at the crib. He did, uh, he had like my audio playing and he just interacted and did my little footlock for joke or whatever. Like, I was like, man, I could have just did that at the house. If I would have really just sit down and, you know, instead of thinking, nah, let me get the big. And, and they did that on. Team. I don't know the cartoon thing though. Like, your homie, yeah, I definitely give me that info. I love it. I love they, it. So they did that on TikTok. He acted out your joke on TikTok? Yeah, he acted out my joke on TikTok. So, okay, yeah, my daughter was explaining to me, like, basically, I guess you must have uploaded your joke uh, first, and then they were able to grab the audio, right? Yeah, it, it, uh, that, and uh, they posted, I posted it on other platforms, so they, too, got so it. they could have just ripped it from there. But yeah, I've seen that, because after I learned it, I, I, I posted a few jokes on here, and I didn't even know that uh, I had, like, for another joke, I had a few people do the same thing and never even knew it. Mm. Like, they just acted out. Some people be, I can't lie, some of the act outs be trash. They'll just sit there and just be a still camera and just sit there and say, yeah. <laughs> you know, recite joke or whatever. But some people really act it out, go to different rooms and shit. It's cool. TikTok crazy, man. I, I can't even lie. It's, it's a crazy little app. Hmm. Yeah, I need to figure that out. <laughs> I don't know, man. That. That's how you know. That's how you know you're getting old. When like the new thing, it's like, God damn it! I was just getting used to MySpace, and here they go make a new. What is it like a MySpace? Yeah, man. It'd be the it's, same shit. First, it was Twitter. <laughs> Twitter was the one. Then everybody started tweeting. The next thing you know, man, I ain't getting on Snapchat, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. These little kids. Yeah. Well, I I had to get back on Snapchat because they got the like some funny ass filters on there, so I save yeah. them. I'll record some shit and save it, and then I can use it somewhere else. <laughs> got, wow. got And then with the face swap, with the face swap, it's easier to do, you know, characters and impressions and shit. But uh, yeah, man, it is true. It is, it's true. They, they got all that, all them little features. They got that on the TikTok thing. Yeah, oh, word, man. When when do you think? Um, I keep hearing that Texas wants to be like the first state, you know, to get the economy back going and get people back to work. Uh, what what have you heard, man? Cause I, I, I tr- it's just so much freaking news. I don't know who, what, where. <laughs> man, I honestly, it, it's crazy though. Cause we, I think they said something about we got the lowest amount of tests. Like we ain't even get no tests like that. Man. So it's probably cause I that, that's that's what I've been saying about the little virus or whatever. Like I honestly think it's inevitable. It's kind of like the flu. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. We all, Everybody, you're going to get it at some point. You know what I'm saying? I just hope that I get the Kevin Durant version. The one that... The I, 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 <laughs> I don't feel it. You know what I'm saying? So, we, there's, there's a lot of people that might have it right now, but... Man, there's... Dude. I think... Man, no, no, no. Say what? No, I thought you were saying, but I, I think the, uh, the, they, the money... They ain't gonna let the money run out. They gonna bring us back regardless of how many people dropping uh, by the end of May. Streets yeah, it's gonna be back by the end of May. They they ain't gonna let it. Nah, because they ain't gonna let the money fuck up like that. Because in yeah. in a way, in a way, that will be worse, and in a way, that can kill. They say that that way can kill even more people and people that you won't. You won't be able to put like a name or number. You know what I'm saying? Like if somebody dies of Corona, they can keep track and be like, this many people died from Corona. But from a bad economy, it's harder to be like this many people died from this decision. But um, but yeah, I, I agree, man. They pretty much telling us right now, like most of y'all going to catch it. We ain't got no cure. We ain't got no vaccine. Just make sure y'all don't uh, hoard everything. Uh, make sure that the hospital still got masks and, and make sure... Um, 
y'all don't overwhelm the hospitals. Like, don't catch it all at once, but pretty much everybody's going to damn near catch it, you know? Yeah, that's, the, I mean, and that would be the better way, though, because at least people in situations where they can get help, you know what I'm saying? That's that's why I understand the whole quarantine shit, everybody locked down, because you don't want everybody with that shit at once then nobody can get treated. It's just got to be a whole bunch of bodies dropping. Man. If it's, uh-huh, go ahead. No, nah, go ahead. If, mm-hmm. if, was, 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 if it's controlled, then I think it'll be a little bit better. But what, what you saying? No, I was saying, like, I need to look on Amazon how much one of those little forehead uh, fever detectors they had that shit at the show. Like, you coming in the showroom, let me see a ticket, let me see your forehead. Click, 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 click. Okay. Nah, bitch, you running hot. You, you need to, like, nah, you can laugh from the crib. Take it 10% to no. We we hey we gonna refund in the mail. We're not don't go to the box office. Don't don't go to the restroom. Don't pass go. Like we gonna zoom your shit. It's gonna be something like that, bro. It's gonna be crazy. If people gonna be, but then at the same time you got people that got it that don't even know. They ain't got no symptoms. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, one of them probably just slid in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna have a big ass Q t like bitch. Hold on. We go run it right in real quick. Nah, I I don't know, man. We I hopefully hopefully they get the vaccine or something. I mean, I don't really know what to make of it, bro. I I, I don't really even know. Well, you I know, like uh huh. That bigger part of our lives like that, but yeah, hopefully we'll be ready for the for the next one a little bit better because now, like, if this was a fire drill or if this ends up being like a wake up call, um or even like a scary wake up call, we'll know a little bit more. Like, you know, it's been a long time since there was a global pandemic and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy times, but, um, you know, I think we're going to, uh, this, this is the best time to be alive though. Like imagine if, if this happened before the internet, like the doctors couldn't even share information quickly. They couldn't, they couldn't communicate. Like they're saying there might be a type of a UV light uh called a far uv that kills viruses and they're saying that you know they might be able to just make them to where you you know 20 dollar version you put in your car it kills all viruses in your car put it in your house every time you cut on the light it's just killing viruses and or you know like the little roomba robot they could just put one on there i guess i don't know yeah just make them up on the state man i I just hope whoever (laughs) figure it out don't be a hoe because you know somebody will figure it out and be like, all right, a million dollars appeal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they say that's... Somebody, uh, I think when they, uh, I forgot, it was that dude that bought that Wu-Tang album. Didn't he have a cure for something? AIDS. Uh, he, he tried to dry the price up on them HIV pills or something like that? Yeah, he got in trouble. He went to jail for it. But um, but yeah, that that's a big part of it too. Like vaccines... From, I've been doing some research, man. I'm uh, reading this one little, this book called uh, "Deadliest Enemy." It's all about viruses and stuff. And um, the dude he used to work for the CDC. He mentions uh, Dr. Fauci in there. He talks about like when they first discovered AIDS and HIV. Um, a lot of interesting stuff. And and basically, he says that vaccines take like years and years, millions and millions of dollars, a lot of risk because it got to go through like three phases of testing. And by the time it gets to the last phase, they might say, uh, oh, it's faulty or, or nobody wants to buy it or nobody cares about that. Or um, or the people who have that illness can't afford the vaccine. So they're just like, fuck it. So money definitely a part of it. Yeah. Nah, that's... We're going to have to wait a while for this shit, man. But we're going to be in the streets by then, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you. After... They not going to... They not gonna have us in the house in June, bro. No matter, I mean, I'm talking about a whole nother virus can come out. <laughs> a whole nother virus can come out twice as deadly by uh, next month. They still gonna be like, oh, we let y'all out the house. June, go make your money. Go do whatever you gonna do. Go make your money. Fuck your money. Where the dollars at? That's how it's gonna be. Yeah, my bad. I had to mute my mic real quick. Baby's crying. But, um, uh, you know what though, man? Like, when when they do open up the economy back up and we do start hitting stages and doing shows, 
Like, I, I'm serious about the little fever thing. Like, I want to come up with at least have a ill brainstorm session just all about safety. Like, you know, um, nothing that's, like, super expensive. Like, like literally putting a swab in someone's nose. But, um, like, have a, have a doctor on site. Like, man, when Chingo, when Chingo do your show, dog, man, he bring a doctor. He got a doctor in the lobby. They they swabbing people up, you know what I mean? He got about two, three little thick safe. nurses. Man, I feel safe. <laughs> yeah, he had about two, three little thick nurses in the lobby, and they was checking people. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. Uh, I'm down, man. I'm down with the movie, man. I'm down with the, uh, we gonna be in a, uh, the Comedy Safety Bureau. Yeah, so, hey, man, I've had you on here, like, almost 26 minutes, uh, are you good for another minute or, or so, or you gotta or you gotta head out? Can you hear me? Oh uh, man, I'm 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 good. Couple, well, however you wanna do it, man. I'm uh just a couple. I'm I'm uh I'm hustling in the background. <laughs> okay, well yeah, I was gonna say just a couple more minutes so we can try and hit that thirty minute mark and uh I could just make it a whole episode. Uh, you know, we could come up with a little outro in a minute. But um but man, this fucking Corona shit. Lord have mercy. Uh, you been reading anything or uh, uh, looking into anything? Or, or how, how's your mind right now, man? Like, are you just feeling like, golly, you having rough days and shit? Man, I wanna. That, that's why I'm very thankful to my plug. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Keep me grounded. He's essential. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He weathering me through the storm right now, you know what I'm saying? But I, I have had some days where I'm just in here, like, what the fuck, man? This is this shit. I've really been cool, though, man, because I, I kind of needed the break. I, I've i honestly just been kind of disconnecting myself from the serious side of it, you know, because I, I was looking into it. I was reading a lot of the shit that was going to happen before it happened, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I already kind of, I was reading what was happening to China and shit. Like, once China was at, like, 80,000 cases and some shit like that, I was already kind of in, and I was like, oh, shit, this shit already probably hit the U.S., about to hit the U.S. We ain't doing shit. Shit's still bumping. People at the club. I had my phone then, and once I saw how we was already handling the situation on some fucking shit, I was like, well, we're already fucked. Let me just go ahead. And <laughs> let me just go ahead and just uh, enjoy it, you know. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm so happy. I, I feel bad for the people in New York. I feel real bad for them because the shit it still ain't really like a reality to us out here just yet because it hasn't punched us in the gut. You know what I'm saying? Which I hope doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I haven't been able to just. I, I distance myself from yeah. all that shit. I, I can't read up. I, I can't get sad about this shit no more. Because mm-hmm. it's. I'm just be sitting here depressed. I'm just. I, I already didn't. Hand, aside, hand sanitize my shit enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, I done, done all this shit. I, I can't deal with the paranoia. I'm, I have some days where I'll, I'll be like, man, fuck it. Let me just go ahead get the shit <laughs> yeah 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 that was me yesterday like man look they ain't really giving us no kind of um they ain't really a whole lot of answers besides look man you're gonna be some rough weeks ahead and that uh, we're gonna try to get the economy back to bumping but um i i, I have my eye on it too because there's some podcasters that i listen to they called it out like right as soon as the shit was happening they're like yo we should probably close them airports from china so i was already kind of up on game and then <clears throat> we did uh, we did Kansas City. We came back, and that's when that Houston water line had broken, right? So then oh, yeah. uh, people were running to get water, and I told my girl, I was like, look, while we're here, let's get a bunch of Purell and Clorox and all this shit that I'm hearing uh, homeboy talk about. Like, go ahead and stock up on some rice and beans and shit. And, um, and then we had to go do uh, Florida, so we kicked it in Miami for a day. And this uh, restaurant DJ Khaled is associated with Finger Licking. It was packed. It was all like, it was right before spring break, but it was packed. And um, you could still joke about it on stage out there where we were in Florida. And then five days later, the news started accelerating. Now we got to go do Phoenix. 
now you can't joke about the shit no more. Now, like, you go to the gym, the people just like, you know, y'all should probably get the fuck up out of here. Damn, you got you got to see the phases of it from the different cities and shit. Well, That's you can crazy. still. Well, well, I was having a, you know, I was working, I was getting on stage. Thank, thank God, the people from Naples and Phoenix showed up because, you know, needed that. You know, we needed that because yeah. you know it's off time now. So thank you, Phoenix. Yeah. Thank you, Florida. Thank you, Kansas City. Uh, you know, we were barely kicking the year off. We were barely kicking the tour off. Uh, so like you said earlier, man, it's time to get innovative and it's time to really like assess the situation and only the strong gonna survive, man. Cause a lot of people in this business, they're not going to know how to, uh, well, let me pick up this tool. What, what's zoom again? Or, uh, you know, live, why well, I gotta go live for, yeah. um, uh, and this is it, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. And everybody really hoping it's just going to be a quick phase, which is, I mean, what I'm hoping too. I'm, I don't. I don't want to make no permanent adjustments, adjustments to doing shit online and uh, getting used to not being around or just being able to make the people laugh right there. Like I, I'm not trying to get used to that, but yeah, find some kind of way to satisfy yourself and keep yourself going at least in the midst of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be writing or whatever it may be. Hey, so um, uh, I'm gonna let you go, but go ahead and just tell everyone where they can find you online. Mm-hmm. Uh, what projects, you know, they can look forward to? Oh, man, uh, you know what I'm saying? Jeff Joe, checking out again, man. Y'all can follow me, find me on ashleymadison.com. Uh, username Daddy Longleg. Uh, nah, but I be at Axel Red every Monday when the streets jump in, Punchline Mondays. Uh, our Instagram is Punchline Mondays. My Instagram is Sweet Jones. Uh, it's spelled like hotel suite though for the people that went to the third grade, you know what I'm saying? Uh, John's with a Z, but yeah, y'all can catch me. On the, oh, yeah, and last was jumpjoe.com. I got a little website, I just paid my little bill for that. So, y'all go go get on the website. I got videos and stuff, and um, I got my OnlyFans account coming for the ladies. Hey man, it's webcam time now. <laughs> yeah, All right. you know what I'm I, I've been I've been doing me some some jailhouse pushups since we on lockdown. You know what I'm saying? So you might see a new me in the streets, Chingo. You might see a new me. Yeah, he's gonna be swollen after the quarantine. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to Jeff Joe. Uh, he Appreciate sent- you, man. And I, I, I love to have you on the punchline shit. Whenever I get this shit going, man, I, I'll hit you up and be back about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, Houston based comedian representing Beaumont, Texas. Thanks for uh, checking in on us. And, uh, on, man. Baby. Yeah, all day, baby. Already, bro. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Peace.